Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So being a waiting pool attendant, it was my first job. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. You get 25 cents more than minimum wage. I had an interview for this job. This job is only in the summer and the only uniform is a t-shirt. There are two trainings that you would have to do as well as completing a a waiting pool course. The trainings were nightmares. If I had it my way, I would make the trainings more interactive. These trainings were not interactive. They were people reading off PowerPoint slides for hours. And then when it came to in-pool demonstrations of first aid, the trainers would be standing on the outside of the pool. They wouldn't be inside with the rest of us. And they would just be like telling us what to do, but it was in a very unclear matter. So that took a lot of time to do. I worked this job for three years. The first year, I was placed in the West End of Toronto. Nobody tells you that the West End has different rules than the East End. In the West End, you have to stand the entire time. You're not allowed to sit down. You would also get placed at a different pool every two weeks. You wouldn't be given any umbrella to block out the sun or sunscreen. The supervisors were super nitpicky. They would drive around and call you on the walkie-talkie and tell you what you're doing wrong. There was never any encouragement from them. I feel like at any workplace, your supervisors or boss should always make sure their workers are motivated. At the organization that I worked at, there was none of that. There are also no porta potties in the West End, so you would always have to find a washroom during your break. Sometimes there would be only one waiting pool attendant at a West End pool, which I find is not safe, but for the majority of the time, there are two people. You would either get nitpicky coworkers that would snitch on you for doing one mistake or you would get laid back chill people who really didn't care. I remember one time one of my coworkers who was my coworker for the day, he laid down beside the waiting pool and then we didn't even know but a supervisor came by and he got in trouble. If you had a chill coworker, you normally would drain the pool a little bit early so you could go home earlier and if you didn't, draining your pool took forever and you would have to wait so long because you can't leave a puddle by itself because even a small puddle someone could drown in. During thunderstorms, your supervisors would keep you working at the pool and would not let you drain the pool until the very last second. I remember it was thunderstorming pretty bad and raining hard and my supervisor called us at the last minute to drain the pool. Luckily, my coworker and I are pretty chill. So we actually started draining the pool a long time before our supervisor called us to and it still did not drain because it was just raining so hard so me and him we hid in the shed and honestly we just left the pool we just left it draining the whole pool was filled with water and we still left it because it would take hours 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 to drain and it was continually raining so i would say by the next day it would probably be dry and ain't nobody waiting that long because we have to work the next day. If it rained or if you had to close down your pool earlier, in the West End, you would have to take the sign-in sheet all the way to your supervisor. If it was a regular shift, there would be rovers who would ride their bicycle to each pool and collect the sign-in sheets for the day. In the West End, there aren't many children who go into the pool, so for many hours, during your shift there would be no one or sometimes the whole shift there would be no one so i got into skateboarding back then and i taught myself so i would just skateboard around the park and in my second year i was placed in the east end you are allowed to sit down and you're placed at one pool for the whole entire summer i had a co-worker that summer who would wear black shades and who would sleep and then i had another co-worker who brought their mom to work so 
to get your pool ready, you would have to sweep all the dirt and leaves from the pool with brooms. I would always get blisters because the brooms they provided were very rough. So I recommend bringing your own pair of winter gloves. Then you have to hose it down. Most people don't do this, but you actually are supposed to. You're also supposed to rake the playground sand. Most people don't. Only if you're like bored, you would do that because you're supposed to rake it to get rid of any glass or any sharp things in the sand. And then you have to open the pit and the pit is locked so you have to have keys and it's basically where the water is so you have to open it and you have to start filling up your pool and then you stop it and then one of you does the chlorine you have to wear a yellow hazmat suit rubber boots you have to wear uh gloves you have to have a face shield the face shield doesn't block out all the chlorine smell when you're mixing the chlorine so i always wanted them to make the like face shields longer because like there's always wind in the park so the chlorine smell would always like come back into your lungs and that's not good after you add the chlorine you have to let it settle for a little bit and then you have a test kit so you have to make sure the chlorine is in the correct ph level and then you have to put up the pool sign that says the opening hours and the rules and you have to take out the first aid kit and bring it to your pool and then you have to log the chlorine ph level and what time your pool is opening. Every hour you have to test the chlorine, so sometimes throughout the shift nobody really wants to add more chlorine because it takes a while and nobody really wants to get into that suit and smell the chlorine. Sometimes we wouldn't add more chlorine even if we need more just because most times you're only working five hours so by the fourth hour there isn't much chlorine and you only have one hour to go so you don't really care. If a dog runs through the water, you would have to drain the water and add new water and chlorine. And I think the ratio of adult to children is one adult per two kids. So you would always have to tell adults like they can't drop off their kids and then dip. They have to watch their kids in the pool. One major tip that I would give waiting pool attendants is to leave the PPE out to dry because I remember I would take temporary shifts at different pools and some people wouldn't so like when you wear the hazmat suit it smells like mold because they didn't let it dry out and it smelled so bad they should also give you boots that fit they give you boots that are so oversized that it's hard to walk in when you open up the pit to turn on the water you have to be wearing boots because if the doors because they're made of metal if the doors like slam on your feet by accident then the boots make sure that your toes don't get sliced open they would also tell you never to go inside the pit but I remember our water wasn't turning on one time, so one of my coworkers actually went inside and I was like, quickly, quickly, go inside and turn it on or like fiddle around with it. If you are younger than 16, you aren't allowed to be left alone at your pool. So during break time, if a older coworker has to go on break, then another person from a different pool has to come and be with you. If you work eight hours, then you get three breaks, two 15 minute breaks and one 30 minute break. And and if you work five hours, then you just get a 30 minute break. During some of my breaks, I would take a towel that I brought from home and I would go and sleep in the fields. And if you had kids that would go into your pool with diapers, you would always have to ask if they had a swim diaper on because I remember one time I had a kid that went into the pool and they didn't have a swim diaper on and their diaper grew so massive that it looked like it was about to explode. It's also very easy to get warts on your feet so I would recommend wearing foot flops or slides. And then for my last year, my third year, I just took replacement shifts so I could decide where I wanted to work and whether I wanted to work or not. 
and if you work on Canada Day then you get time and a half and working at different pools some are quieter than others and some pools have like festivals that go on sometimes so that's pretty fun and that's pretty much my experience as working as a waiting pool attendant I wouldn't recommend it because you get overworked and you're only paid a minimum wage you have to do so much and yeah with that being said I will see everybody in another video